Hey, how's it going? This is Jack Oberkirsch with HomeMusicMaker.com. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on the Reaper VU meter. Before we go any further, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell to be notified when we come out with other videos. We got a bunch of content coming your way and you don't want to miss out. So let's start with what is a VU meter and how do we use it? First off, the VU in VU meter stands for volume unit. So the full name for a VU meter is volume unit meter. It's just shortened to VU meter for uh, simplicity. And VU meters have been around for pretty much as long as recording has been around. It's a way to measure the, um, the output level of an audio signal. Of course, back in the day, and also still today in studios that use hardware gear, it's an actual piece of analog or hardware gear that is actually, you know, present in the studio. But VU meter that we're going to be going over today is a, a digital one found in the Reaper DAW. Yeah, basically, a VU meter is used to measure an audio signal output. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I'll, I'm going to hit play on this track. So this right here is the um, master VU meter in Reaper, and as we can see, um, as the track plays, it's telling us in real time a couple things. It's telling us the peak of our track and also the um, average loudness, or RMS, which stands for root mean square. And yeah, root mean square is um, loudness measured in voltage. And then the other thing that we're paying attention to, which is very important, especially in modern music production, is the peak. Uh, and in Reaper, this little... the. Uh, the level right here in the middle is the peak, and these two levels on the outside are the loudness, or RMS. Cool. So yeah, that's what a VU meter is. Um, they've been around for a long time. They're used to measure the output level of an audio signal. Let's move on. I'm going to show you the, the places that you can find it in Reaper. So the first one is this one right here. It's in the, uh, the bottom left of the mixer. And uh, if the mixer was not open, you would hit View, Mixer. So that's the first place to find the the master VU meter in Reaper. The next place, go to view, floating mixer master. And then now we just have a floating window of the um, the master bus, which gives us the uh, also the master VU meter. And then the last place is uh, view, master track, there it is. And then that one actually shows up here on your, on your track list. So yeah, so that's the three ways you can find the master track in Reaper. Cool, so, the next thing that we're going to take a look at is we're going to go through the settings of the Reaper VU meter. So I'm going to hit play on the track so we can see what these settings do also. And to access the settings, we could right click the VU meter right here on the track list version, or we can right click this one. Cool. So that's our settings menu right there. Let's hit play on the track. Cool. So the first setting is the TCP meter which stands for Track Control Panel, which is this meter right here. So watch what happens when we change this one. Let's change it to Loudness. You can see now that the um, that this master track is measuring in loudness instead of peak. And that's helpful because we can we can use these two different tracks to if we want to measure loudness over here with a, uh, a nice detailed view, but then also measure loudness and peak over here with the other master track. So that's the TCP meter. Um, the next, I'm going to change that back to peak. The next thing is the mixer meters, which is this one down here. And we have the option of viewing in peak, loudness, or both, which is the default. Um, and that's what I always stick with. So that way you can read both at the same time. The next thing is the mixer top readout. So look what happens when we change this. Cool, so when we change that to loudness, our RMS is displayed at the top and the peaks are displayed at the bottom. Again, I prefer my peaks at the top, it makes more sense, and then we still have our RMS down here at the bottom. And then, remember, RMS stands for root mean square, and it's a way of measuring an audio signal based on voltage. Um, okay, cool. The next thing that we can do is we can turn on or off multi-channel peak metering. I usually leave it on, although it's not often used. I'll show you what we could use it for. So let's hit the routing button on our master track. Um, and let's change our track channels to, let's say we had uh, four tracks. And now let's hit pre let's hit play and see what happens. So as you can see over here, because we changed uh, multi-channel peak metering on, we can actually view four channels. Let's turn it off. It's just back to the two. Um, that's only helpful if you have more than um, two track channels on your master track. I pretty much never do. That's just kind of the way I work. But yeah, so that's... That's for multi-channel peak metering. This next one uh, that you can turn on is to show the oversampled peaks or the true peak value. And what that does is that'll show you if you're gonna hit any peaks, if you were to sample to an, a different sample rate. So 
my track's kind of quiet right now um, because I had to turn it down for the for video's sake. So it probably probably won't have too much of an effect. Let's see. No, it's pretty much the same right now. But yeah, but what that setting will tell you is, um, let's say you were at a a, sa a low sample rate, it'll tell you that if you were to if you were to sample to a higher sample rate or something like that, would you experience any peaks or clips then? And um, so that's what that setting will show you. I typically don't need to use it because um, I'm not resampling too extremely in the final stages of mixing. So yeah, let's move on to the loudness metering settings. And uh, again, these settings are to control kind of your RMS loudness and how that's how that's um, and how you monitor that with the uh, the Reaper VU meter. So let's hit play, change some of these settings around. So the first one we can view in combined RMS, we can view in stereo RMS. Oh, and also I'm going to change to loudness only for this, so that we can get a good view of what we're changing around here. So stereo RMS or combined RMS. Combined RMS is the default, I typically stick with that. And then this next setting is the RMS window. Um, and this is actually the uh, the window, like the time, the time window that, because um, what RMS is, is it's an average volume moment to moment based on what you set this as. Right now it's at zero milliseconds. I typically have it more like 250 or 300 milliseconds. That way it's every 250 milliseconds, that's when it's collecting the data for the average volume and that's how it displays your RMS. It's based on a, uh, a moment to moment basis. And yes, this RMS window lets you set how short or long that moment is. So let's see. So yeah, then we have the RMS displayed down here also in a numeric form. Cool, the next thing that we can change is the display offset. And let's see what happens when we do this. Let's change it to zero for the big example. So as you can see, what it's doing is it's changing um, the way that the volume meter is offset. You can see it changed by the, uh, you can tell it's changing by the decibel values right here in the volume unit meter. So let's change it to 20, 14, 12. And I, tip, I typically keep it um, at uh, 12 or 14 or something like that. Cool. The next setting there is the display gain. And this will um, create an offset of the displayed gain that is on the, the volume unit meter. So I'll show you what I mean. So it actually uh, dropped the gain a little bit there when I changed that. I typically leave that at zero though. And then this next thing, so I'm going to change it back to peak and loudness. This next setting is uh, is to change the red threshold. I typically leave it at four. Um, I'll show it this. And because my track's not too loud right now, um, we're not seeing too much of it. But basically, what would happen is on these loudness peaks on the side with the red threshold, um, if you change that, it'll just it'll change how much uh, you can view the peaks or not. And um, I, I believe the default is zero. I typically leave that one at zero. But yeah, it'll just kind of offset whether or not you're going to see any peaks in the loudness there. Cool. So the next thing that we're going to check out is, um, you know, how to interpret, how to use the volume unit meter and what we do with the information. So first of all, uh, one thing that's great about any meter in Reaper is when you press play on a track, the way to reset the volume is you just click these numbers right here and it, it resets to the most recent peak. So yeah, reading the volume unit meter, what, what, I'm, what this is telling me right now is I totally have a, I have a bunch of headroom to master my track. Um, and right now, like I said, the reason my tr track is pretty quiet, I actually have it turned down about 14 decibels through the mix bus just to get the audio for this video right. But if I were to turn that up, it'd be pretty loud for you guys, so I'm not going to do that. But if I were to turn that up, I have a, um, a limiter on this track as well as another, um, a couple other compression plugins. So it's actually kind of coming in right at... Um, uh, negative 0.1 decibels. It's like right at the roof. That's how you get, that's how you optimize sound levels for your, for your mix is by using the volume unit meter. Cause, um, you can also see if it was peaking as well as with, with any of the individual track meters, you can look out for peaks and that's how, you know, um, these meters are how you can determine whether you need to turn it track up, turn it down. Basically volume unit meters are essential for the gain staging process. Let's take a look at another function you can do. If you set the 
loudness metering settings, if you set this first meter setting to one of the LUFS settings, then we actually have LUFS displayed down here, which is incredibly helpful for um, mixing and mastering for different streaming platforms. Different streaming platforms have different thresholds that they compress the music to when you upload it to their site. So if you optimize a mix for say Spotify or Apple Music, etc., it'll make it so that when you upload that track onto Spotify or Apple Music, your mix will actually sound like it did in your DAW rather than it being over compressed from the, uh, from the streaming service. So yeah, again, to look at, to view your, um, mix in LUFS, you can either do LUFS M or LUFS S. And you can also change the readout once you, if you have a LUFS setting, uh, then you have the option to change the readout. If you're on combined RMS or stereo RMS, you'll notice the readout is just set at maximum. When you change to LUFS, then you have a bit more, uh, options for the readout here. So yeah. And then, like I said, if you are measuring in LUFS, those will show up down here. See it changes from RMS to LUFS. I'll change it back so you can see. Combine RMS. Now it says RMS there. Cool. So that's how you can use the volume unit meter to um, read an output level in LUFS rather than just decibels or RMS loudness. Cool. So the next thing I want to take a look at is the the meters on the individual tracks. Obviously, they behave pretty similarly to the master track. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look at this percussion bus. There it is. Again, if we click this number, it resets the peak and where it's. Uh, the most recent peak. Reset it goes to, you know, you can see hopping all over the place. Um, and then there's a couple things that you can change with the individual track meters. If you right click this track, first of all, you can change the color of the track here. You can add an icon for the track if you fancy. You can also go to track layout, and this is where you can change some things. So let's go to mixer panel. Let's try large sidebar. So now, you know, we can see our plugins over here, and our, vol our volume unit meter is dedicated to this thing right here. Let's try something else. session mixer sure so now we have a completely different uh view so yeah that's how you can actually customize your view of the individual tracks and the volume unit meter is by track layout let's go back let's go to track yeah let's go to default if i can here so that's how you can kind of that's the end and other than that the the volume unit meters um on the individual tracks behave exactly the same except they're only telling you, they're not telling you as much data as the master volume unit meter is. In fact, over here, all, the, all they're telling you is loudness. You don't get uh, peaks. Cool. So yeah, that's the volume unit meter for Reaper. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ding that bell on this video to be notified of other uh, videos that we're going to have coming out soon. Uh, we got a bunch more content coming your way and you don't want to miss out. So thank you. I'm Jack Oberkirsch. Have a good day.